Hi everybody, Barbara here. Today I'm going to show you how I do my alcohol ink backgrounds. I would show you how I did this exact one, but apparently I forgot to turn the camera on when I started. So I'm going to show you another one using the exact same technique. You can use it for any colors. I posted this card several weeks ago and got lots and lots of comments on Instagram about it and requests for um, how I did it. So today I'm going to show you exactly how I did this background. When I start, I get all my supplies together. I use a lot of 91% alcohol. I use some blending solution, but not a lot. I like to have my alcohol in different uh, ways to apply it. So you will see several little containers here. I have a couple of cups of clear alcohol just for cleaning brushes, paper towels, my ink. For this, I'm using butterscotch, terracotta, and lettuce. You can use any combination you want. I do like the alcohol ink blending pen and I use a um, Copic marker with the fine point with just alcohol in it. My brushes, Upo paper of course, and the palette. I do really like the palette. I will put a little bit of every color that I'm going to use in the cups before I get started. I just fill the, um, just cover the bottom basically of each color, and then I'll put a little bit of just clear alcohol in two of the cups because sometimes I just want just a touch of um, clear and no color. So I usually set that right over beside me so I can get to it easily, and I'm going to go ahead and fill those two cups up with um, just plain alcohol, and then I'm going to get my brush cleaning supplies ready. I have the paper towels laying over to the left so I can just swipe my brush on it. When I change colors I clean the brush every time otherwise you're going to get a muddy mess. I use um, the biggest brush first and I want it wet so I go ahead and do that and then I just start dropping some ink. I guess that's the way everybody starts. Um, it doesn't matter what you put down first I will um, put all three colors. As you can see, when a color hits, it moves whatever color it, it lands on. So if, you're, uh, if you do it carefully, you won't get muddied colors. You can keep them pretty distinct. So I use the big brush wet with alcohol and just kind of, um, I don't know, smear it out into big, big areas of color for my base. And then I dry it. I use my Copic airbrush system. You could use a straw, whatever you want, but the airbrush system works wonderfully. And then I just drop some big drops of clean alcohol on it. As you can see, it's going to move those colors. And by doing that, I'm moving a little bit smaller in size um, to my color areas. And then I spritz it with my mini mister which has just clear alcohol in it. And then I start with a smaller brush, moving things around, adding alcohol, clean alcohol, just to um, spread out the areas of color. This is what I call working my colors. I will do it um, on big, big areas and small areas. As you can see here, these are like little veins, maybe in the colors and I'm I'm toning them down and sort of spreading them out a little bit with just clean alcohol. Now I'm going to start using bringing in some color with just the tip of my brush. I'm bringing the green in first and just putting it wherever it, it pleases me. There is no um, formula for this. There's no real um, rules that I can give you. It's just whatever looks good to you. What do you want? I find um, it looks more pleasing to leave some areas a little bit larger than others. So you will see as it moves along that that sort of evolves. I will add the other two colors, the terracotta and the butterscotch, alternately with the green. And wherever I think I need another color, I'll just add it in. The more ink and or alcohol that you have on your brush tip when you apply it, the bigger your area will be. So the alcohol just, just spreads out. So just um, 
just know that that's going to give you a, a larger area. As you saw right there, I added some little green dots in that larger um, butterscotch area, I guess, and that breaks it up. And you'll just be doing what I'm doing right now until you're happy with it. There's no set end point. You just work it until you're done. If you think you've overworked it, not a problem. Just go back in and put some more ink. Just keep working it. I will spritz um, two or three times during the course of um, doing a background because I love those fine little little dots of um, alcohol where it moves color out and you can work within that and around it so that you have it looks like different um, texture in different um, areas again just work it until you are happy I have um, just come to love these backgrounds with um, the marbly look, the small areas of color, and that is probably the only way I will do alcohol backgrounds ever, because I just love the small areas. It's pretty amazing how you can use such different colors together, because as I mentioned, when you add a color, it will move the other colors. It will not blend with it, as in watercolor. When you put a color on top of a watercolor, it's going to meld, and you're going to come up with a third color. It doesn't happen so much with alcohol inks because it's going to move whatever you put it on. Now, I like to take my blender uh, pen, which does have blender solution in it, and um, so it's just clear, and it is really good to break up concentrations. Um, narrow concentrations of color that you don't want to be quite so um, intense uh, like these veins again so I'm just using um, the smaller tip and now I'm going to do the same with my Copic marker it's even smaller so it breaks it up even more my dream is to uh, buy a bunch of these chow markers and put um, several different colors that I use a lot so that I can actually put really tiny areas of those colors um, I might work towards that right now I'm just using the one with the clear and I'm just using alcohol 91 percent alcohol in this marker but it's really good for um, putting some little fine areas of clear ink this one is getting a little bit dry so I'm dipping it in my clear ink to get enough movement of color that's why you see me taking it off camera. Once I load it up, I, again, I won't have to do that. I love the way this little fine point just really gives you um, movement of color, but in such a fine, small way that it's very subtle. I love that. So now I'm just going to keep on playing with it and till I'm done I see some areas that need a little work that needs a the, that vein as I called it needed a little more breaking up than the uh, Copic marker was was giving me so I used the tip of my brush dipped in alcohol you still see that sort of Y looking outline but it's not quite so um, stark if you like it darker by all means leave it I just wanted it broken up a little bit as you can see at either end I seem to have larger areas and maybe in the center some smaller areas and then curving over the top I like that look really well um, the variation in size rather than having everything uniform I just think this looks more pleasing to the eye and um, makes it look like there's more texture so I'm getting to the point where I'm almost where I'm gonna be happy I'm just filling in a few areas that I think need a little um, either color or a little alcohol 
for lightning. And again, this is so subjective. It is whatever pleases your eye. If you have um, too much green in one area, go in and add a little bit of the terracotta or the um, butterscotch. So now I'm almost done. I'm going to go in and uh, break up some of those color concentrations just a little bit more. And, I, and that, there's no rhyme or reason to this either. I just do whatever looks good to me. If you do too much with the um, alcohol or the colorless blender, add some color back with the tip of your brush. It is just that simple. This is so much fun, guys. I love doing this. I love coming up with different combinations of color to work together. And even um, just a single color works great, too. One more spritz. And that's pretty much done. I'm not sure you could see that, but on some, especially the, um, the terracotta areas, the ink is a little thick there. And so it's still a little sticky if you don't dry. So it is perfect for adding some deco foil. What I do is I just lay it down and run it through my uh, Vagabond several times. I find that has been the, the best way to add it for me. I love the um, Nouveau Flake gilding flakes, but are they a holy mess. Here's the first one I ever made. I was just, just beginning to work with alcohol inks. This one actually does not use um, the Ranger inks. It uses a Copic refill because there's no real good true gray that stays gray. This is just one color of yellow, sunshine I believe. And here I'm using an orange and a purple. Any combination you want will work. Thanks so much for stopping by. I hope you'll try it.